What's going on everybody, Victor here with a brand new video. I'm gonna talk about the Komen event that's gonna be taking place at UFC 304. It's gonna take place in Manchester, England. I believe this is going to be the UFC's first pay-per-view event ever in Manchester, England. Obviously, they've done plenty of them in London, England, but now they're going up a little bit north in England to have this pay-per-view event in Manchester. Manchester, I believe, is the third largest city in England, it's the second most popular because besides London, everybody knows about Manchester, Manchester United, Manchester City. It's got a very rich history in sports. Now the UFC is coming to town with a great lineup of fights. But I want to talk about the Kilmain event because it's going to be a rematch. What's also a rematch is the main event as well. So the Kilmain and the main event itself are going to be rematches. So it's going to be a very interesting card that's going to, going to take place in Manchester, England. But we have to talk about... Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades, the rematch. This fight was hyped up a lot because this fight, when it began the first time, was the first real test of Tom Aspinall's career. If Tom Aspinall would have won that fight against Curtis Blades, he most likely would have fought for the title next. But plans got derailed during the first 10 to 15 seconds of that fight. After the second exchange, Tom Aspinall got hurt. I believe he ended up tearing, tearing his ACL or his MCL, but he tore a ligament in his knee. He had to be out for the next couple of months. He came back with the flurry. He ended up beating, I believe it was Marcin Tabora in London, England. And later on, he went on to, to beat Sergei Pavlovich to become the interim UFC heavyweight champion of the world. This is going to be the first interim championship fight that we've seen in a while where the interim champion is actually defending his belt. So I really like to see this from Tom Aspinall. He's not going to wait around for Stipe Miotic versus John Jones. He's going to go ahead, defend his belt, be, still be fresh when it comes to the fight game. So by the time that he does unify the belts, he'll still be a fresh fighter. He wouldn't have been on the sidelines for too long and he'll be good to go. So what's going to happen with both of these Titans clash yet again, because both these guys are Titans. Tom Aspinall is the definition of a well-rounded mixed martial artist, and so is Curtis Blades as well. So this fight can pretty much take place anywhere. It can take place on the feet. It can take place on the ground. It can take, face, take place against the fence of the octagon with some dirty boxing, with some clinching on the, fleet, on the feet, with some underhooks and some overhooks, trying to change levels and try to go down for the takedown because... Curtis Blades is historically a wrestler, but he's gotten a lot of his work done on the feet in the past. He's got a lot of power, and if he gets you down on the feet, he can be able to finish you via ground and pound. Now, Curtis Blades isn't the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner out there in the game. Tom Aspinall is. He's been doing jiu-jitsu ever since he's been a kid. His dad is the BJJ instructor. He was the BJJ instructor for one of the top mixed martial arts team teams in England. I believe it was in Liverpool with Darren Till's team. I forget what the, the team is called, but they were over there for a while, but now Tom Aspinall has his own team. He's doing his own thing, and the fruits have definitely bared labor. So he's been doing a lot better as of late. So if I'm Tom Aspinall and I basically look at that fight again, even though it did only take place for about 10 to 15 seconds, he was getting starched on the feet for a little tiny bit. And I really would have liked to see how the fight would have played out if he hadn't had gotten injured. So if I'm Tom Aspinall, I'm going to try to take this fight to the ground, even if Curtis Blades is a wrestler. And I'll pull Curtis Blades into my guard and see what I can be able to do. Test him on the ground a little bit. Try to avoid some of that ground and pound and the vicious elbows that Curtis Blades has been used used to do and doing in a lot of his fights he ended up almost murdering Alistair Overeem with some nasty elbows that opened him wide open and his and their fight that they had a couple years back so avoid the ground and pound definitely bring him into his guard try to see if he can be able to throw up a couple of submissions if not bring the fight to the feet and see if he can be able to beat him because out of these two out of these two fighters Tom Aspinall is going to be the better striker. His striking is very crisp. He's got some really good boxing. He's trained with Tyson Fury in the past, so he has trained with some great sparring partners. So, if it doesn't work on the uh, doesn't work on the ground, bring it back up to the feet. Be able to maintain your distance. Don't get too cr close to Curtis Blades because he can be able to put you down. And definitely keep the movement going. You wanna, you don't wanna be a stationary target. You wanna move to the left, to the right, to the back as well. You wanna make sure that you're, you're swerving. You know, you don't want your head to be 
sitting right there for uh, for it to be a live swivel so and not only just the movement but you also want to work the feints as well you want to keep your opponent guessing and you want to be able to control the octagon you want to be able to walk your opponent down you don't want to be fighting backwards because if you're letting curtis blades march you down then it's going to be a nightmare for you and the same thing goes for curtis blades if you're going to let tom asmo walk you down then he will throw some combinations at you he will distract you and you will land that heavy blow that can be able to put you down also tom aspinall is a counter striker counter striked sergey pavlovich when he fought for the interim title and he knocked them out pretty easily the same thing can happen to curtis blades so you want to pick your strikes very closely very wisely because the the smallest mistake that you can make against a, t a tactician such as Tom Aspinall, he'll put you out. Not only just knock you out, but most likely submit you. If he knocks you down, you're still not out. He'll get on you. He'll try to put some ground upon on you, set you up for a submission, and get that submission. If I'm Curtis Blades, try to pin Tom Aspinall to the fence as much as possible and try to get that takedown. If you're going in for a double leg takedown, you see that Tom Aspinall's stance is really wide and it's really hard for you to do so. Transition to the single leg, be able to make it a little bit easier. We've seen guys such as Almeida in the heavyweight division go in for a double leg takedown like he did against Curtis Blades and he just waited and waited and waited until he could be able to get it and Curtis Blades was just raining down elbows on him and that's how Curtis Blades was able to finish that fight. So if I'm Thomas Asmo as well, if you're going for a double leg takedown, don't and you see that you're not getting it, then don't stay there and wait and wait for Curtis Blades to rain heavy elbows on you until your equilibrium is off balance, you put your knee to the ground, and he finishes you off. So this fight, there's so many different dimensions in how things can go. The last thing I want to see is history repeat itself, and Tom Aspinall or Curtis Blades gets hurt in this fight within the first couple of seconds, and this fight ends up happening in a doctor stoppage yet again, you know? There are some fights that have been cursed, and hopefully it's not this one. I believe it's going to be a great fight. I'm going to go with Tom. I'm not. I'm not Tom Aspinall. I'm going to go with Curtis Blades winning the interim championship of the world because Curtis Blades has been in there with the who's who. Sure, he's been knocked out against Derek Lewis, but he's fighting guys such as he's been guys such as Drago, Alexander Volkov, Alistair Overeem. Almost got Derek Lewis out of there until he got knocked out. Unfortunately, he's also beating the likes of well he's been a lot of other games like I said he's faced the who's who in the whole entire division and he's used he's used his wrestling to be able to win the majority of his fights and also that nasty ground and pound as well Tom Aspinall he's the new school coming in he made his UFC debut in Abu Dhabi fight island a couple years ago and he's blossomed into a great fighter ever since defeating guys such as Sergey Pavlovich Alexander Volkov Marcin Tabora and plenty of other fighters as well in the past. So it's going to be a great fight. I'm going to go with Curtis Blades on this. I believe he's going to win this via decision. I don't think he's going to get Tom Aspinall out of there, but it's going to be a close fight, if you ask me. It's going to be a chess match, and both these guys that have very high octagon IQ are going to go after it, and they're going to want to win this fight. Tom Aspinall is going to want this extremely bad because this is a rematch. He wants to prove the world that that last fight was a fluke, that injury it happened because things do happen in the fight game that he can be able to get back in there and be able to put on a show of a lifetime in front of his hometown fans because he was born in a town about half an hour away from Manchester. So he's pretty much is from Manchester. So it's going to be a great fight. I'm going with Curtis Blades. I think he wins it by decision. It's going to be a great fight. Hope you guys enjoy it. UFC 304 live from Manchester, England. Take it easy, guys.